This is another interesting thing about cladistics. It, uh, it, it is alleged, Nick Matsky in particular has alleged, that cladistics can establish the ancestral, the existence of ancestral forms of the Cambrian animals. And he says one of the ways it does this is that it makes a distinction. Cladus will make a distinction between what are called crown groups and stem groups. Crown groups are uh, animal groups that have all of the shared derived characters that define a given group, like all the shared derived characters that define arthropods. A stem group is a group that has some, but not all of those shared derived characters. Um, and so in uh, one, one of the groups that, is, that some scientists think might be a stem group arthropod is the animalocarids. They have some, but not all of the characters that are present in true arthropods. Now, Maskey argues that by making a distinction between stem and crown groups, you can, you can discern the order in which these different organisms appeared, these different animal groups appeared, the branching order in the history of life. So the stem group would have appeared first because it has fewer of the total number of characters that define arthropods. So according to this way of analysis, the animal caras would come before the true arthropods, things like trilobites, for example. Now, a problem comes up when you use this method of distinguishing stem and crown groups to, to reconstruct evolutionary history. And, and the problem is this, is that very oftentimes the stem groups, which should necessarily come before the crown groups, actually arise in the fossil record either at the very same time as the crown groups or much, much later than the crown groups. Either way, in order to reconstruct a tree, the, the, the uh, evolutionary biologists have to draw what are called ghost lineages, long dotted lines from the first appearance of those stem group animals back to the alleged uh, pr uh, ancestral form that would precede both the stem and the crown group in the history of life. Now those long dotted lines represent fossils that we do not have. Now here's the irony. In order to compensate for a lack of fossil evidence, Nick Matsky says we can use cladistic analysis, and in particular, this technique of distinguishing stem and crown groups, to, to establish these collateral or missing ancestral forms. But in order to do that, he has to posit as a condition of plausibility of these reconstructions, a whole ghost lineage, a dotted line representing other missing fossils. So it's very odd, in order to compensate for missing fossils, we have to postulate more missing fossils. So I don't think that this really solves the problem of the missing fossils. I think it actually accentuates it. I point out in my response to Matsky in the, the epilogue chapter in the paperback version of the book that there are a number of other problems with this critique as well. Um, cladistic analysis, as practiced by many cladists, is actually not thought to be a reliable way of reconstructing the evolutionary past. There are multiple possible uh, e evolutionary histories that correspond to any given cladogram. And so when you, dis when you produce a, a, a cladogram based on cladistic analysis, it doesn't really tell you anything definitive about history. And one of the sources that Matsky cites against Darwin's doubt actually makes that very point. Uh, there are also quantitative problems. There are things called consistency indices that measure how well the assumption of common ancestry is actually reflected in a given cladogram. And the cladograms that Nats Matsky cites actually have very low consistency indices, suggesting that the assumption of common ancestry is, actually fails, uh, sometimes more than 50% of the time. Um, and so on it goes. There are a number of problems with his critique. And I've discussed these in much more detail in this new chapter. And uh, given the, the, the importance of the critique that has been accorded it by many other reviewers, uh, the, the man who reviewed the book in The New Yorker cited Matsky as his, the scientific uh, authority, uh, as his scientific authority in refuting the book. Uh, I think it's, it's well worth a read for people who are interested in how well the argument of Darwin's doubt has actually stood up.